Good morning, good morning, good morning. The smell of coffee is in the air. It must be time for another episode of The Art of Struggle. Welcome to another episode of my podcast called The Art of Struggle. You can hear me rant about art, video games, movies, pop culture, CGI, the industry, and much, much more. My name is Fatai Opawoye, and I'll be your guide as we explore the world of CG, pop culture, and the people who make it all possible. All right, as you guys may know, I simultaneously record uh, for my Anchor podcast and my video podcast. So whenever I look down, I'm looking at my phone to hit the, either the stop, start, whatever. So that's the uh, that's my little disclaimer. All right. So just give me a second to post this. Thank you for being patient. And that is going to be the last time that I will be stopping to look at the screen until the ending quotes. Today on The Art of Struggle, we're going to talk about finishing your game. Five tips for indie developers. All right. So um, this is an article um, brought to you by GameCareerGuide.com. Uh, if you're looking for any industry tips, uh, tools, tricks of the trade, you can definitely check out GameCareerGuy.com. Um, this article was written by Lezek Gorniak. I hope I pronounced that right. All right, let's dive right in. So they, he starts off by saying, finalizing projects is not easy. Video games are an especially good example as the number of variables and factors that are simply not possible to predict in the early stage of game development is exceptionally high and can easily overwhelm and discourage. Nowadays, as the game making technologies are getting more and more accessible and easy to use, many people try to create their own games but only some of them actually finish those games. In this post, I will present a few hints that helped me finalize my own game projects. My observations listed below apply primarily to small indie projects, the projects that we do in our spare time without any significant budget. That means you're not backed by publishers, you're not backed by anything big. You might have some Kickstarter money or something like that, but this is mainly for those two, three, four man teams, you know, out there uh, that are that are struggling through the art of struggle. All right. Still, some stuff I mention in general and might apply elsewhere. The below point might come in handy no matter if you are a complete beginner or if you already work in the game industry. They are for all people who never attempted to create a game on their own. All right. So his first ex advice is to number one, keep it simple. First of all, finishing a project is strongly determined by how you start. When you want to create a game on your own or with a small team without any budget, organized management, project managers, you know, creative directors, all that stuff, um, the very first thing you need to accept is that you will not be able to create all types of games. Due to higher level of complication, the particular projects that we might find simply too difficult are one multiplayer games those games are a huge development challenge and they not only consist of what a single player consists gameplay story visuals um, arc all that good stuff but they also add a completely new layer implementing various web and hosting technologies which is complex and needs maintenance 
Those games also require a particularly extensive QA process, which indie teams usually can't afford. Okay, here's another one. Strategy games. They are a particular challenge because of one aspect. AI algorithms. Those games need to have complex and sophisticated behavior trees for players' enemies or computer-managed allies. In huge projects, this aspect is sometimes handled by a separate specialized team for a good reason. All right, so another one is story-rich games. In this case, someone will have to write all the dialogues and other narrative content so unless you have a dedicated writer on your team consider rather simple narrative this one is from my very own experience in my last project uh, asterized or astohazard solutions limited the decision to add extended dialogue content led to a huge delay in planned release so keep that in mind when you're on your own personal projects, all right? 3D games. This one is controversial, um, as it always depends on yours and your artist's skill and preferences. If you have 3D skills, then it's obvious you'll choose to develop a 3D game. But if you cannot, and uh, you can make a choice, be aware with this, one additional dimension comes much additional work in terms of lighting optimization and potential bugs um, and then there is a, another one the last one which is long gameplay your project does not have to have a long gameplay three to five hours might be absolutely enough and I'm just gonna bounce back to the 3d games aspect um, for the first game that I, I tried to make or I'm trying to, you know, complete out and put out, push out the door, it isn't a 3D game. Even though I went to school and I learned 3D uh, modeling, I know how to model stuff in 3D, light stuff in 3D, uh, do stuff in designer, painter, and I can definitely utilize all those skills. But for the first project I did, for the first project that I'm trying to ship to market, I'm not using all those 3D. I'm actually doing it 2D because it allowed me to iterate much more quickly. Photoshop allowed me to create um, my uh, textures, and I did keep, keep my story super simple. It was like a, a simple narrative that you can go through. Um, I'll definitely discuss that much later on in the future on my, follow, my future podcast. But for the first game I'm making, I'm not using any of the 3D skills. I'm not using any of that stuff, but I am making an effort to make the art look good with the 2D skills that I have. All right? So let's dive into the number two on his uh, tips for finishing your game. All right, number two is work in team. I think that should be working with a team, or I don't know, but he says work in team. While in some aspects it's easier to finalize your project when you are a one-man army and possess all necessary skills, art, programming, sound, level developing, creative direction, you know, color, color, everything. You got everything. You're the all-in-one package. As you're not limited by other people's time and capabilities, it's also rarely a case that you have all of those skills develop on a sufficient level. I'm not going to lie. I do know a person that probably has every one of those skills wrapped into one, and he still has somebody that helps him out. And he still, you know, because you can know a lot, but you can't know Everything. If you say you know everything, I'll take your word for it, but chances are you're telling a fib. All right. As you're not limited to uh, by other people's time and capabilities, it is also rarely a case that you have all those skills developed on a sufficient level. Therefore, it is advisable to work with other people. The main advantages of working in a team are, number one, already mentioned additional skills and knowledge that they bring to the table so you might be all right at music but there are music experts out there that can definitely definitely make your project and take it to the next level um, number two boosted creativity and more diversified uh, design ideas so this might not this might also lead to problems and stalls when team members cannot come 
to a um, agreement on like certain looks and certain directions and stuff but I think that that creative clash definitely breeds and brings out better work because then you're collaborating and, and you're challenging each other to make things better and right, number three with more people comes more capacity so more game content can be done so if you can crank out uh, three uh, pieces in a day and somebody else can crank out two you've got co collective five pieces so now you've got more things that can go in your game more assets more pieces that will make your stuff just that much better alright number four motivation it really encourages you to push your work forward when you see that other teammate just added something new to the project so if you see somebody doing something cool over there you're like I don't want to be shown up let me do something cool on my own let me get something dope to to be able to show you research things you it pushes you you know that it's like friendly competition to make the project just that much better all right however though in most situation all points above are valid only if your team is relatively small. I advise two to five people uh, at most and manage. So this will probably lead into the next step, but the next step will come tomorrow as um, I have other obligations to do, but I want to uh, leave it here for today and then we'll talk about the rest of the finishing uh, five tips for finishing your game tomorrow. All right, let's, let's do it.